Okay. <coughs> okay. Better late than never. It's Sunday, it's not Saturday afternoon, but we're here. Nevertheless. Um, welcome everyone to Progressive Discussions. I am your host, James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21, and I am here with my illustrious <laughs> co-host and mentor and the very founder of Newsletter Censored in 1977, the one and only the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. How are you feeling of this, um, how would I, how should I say, uh, autumn season 2017, sir? Now that was either a Tarzan yell or a bad attempt at a um, at a wolf, a howling wolf, or, or a moose. Yeah, I'm not sure. Well, I know there's a lot of meat, like caribou. There must be a lot of meat when a hunter bags one of them. Anyway, we're uh -huh. drinking something different because I tried it for the first time on the Circle Line uh -huh. that I used to see the commercials since I was a little kid. I never experienced it. The Circle Line takes people, some most often tourists, mm -hmm. on boat tours in uh, around Manhattan and the Statue of Liberty. And I went for the first time because uh, my near dear uh, uh, Natalia mm -hmm. was visiting me from San Diego, California for a little less than a week. Mm -hmm. So I wanted her to experience a little bit of New York City in a positive way. Yeah. Uh, new experiences for her, yes. Uh, I just want to say that uh, I'm very happy to have encountered the uh, human and civil rights demonstration by uh, students for a free Tibet, uh, a free Tibet from China, from mainland China, which is, uh, I think, over 60 years of oppression since Mao Zedong, and uh, rightfully so. They want freedom. The Dalai Lama, the Himalayan mountains, the, the, the Tibetans want freedom from China. It, 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 it is a very, it is a different culture. They are a different people. Um, they want religious freedom, of course. <clears throat> just, 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 you know. You know what? With mainland China, it is a very complex situation. They're 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 more of they're more of a military dictatorship than they are socialism or communism. Uh, but they embrace capitalism. But the money, the the prosperity does not trickle down. Of course, does not trickle down to their people. It it stays pooled at the top. Mm. Hey, does that sound familiar to you, Reverend Bill? Mm -hmm. Ha ha ha. Very okay. much so. Okay. We are drinking Goose, a craft beer that I see advertised often, that I tried on the Circle Line, and I really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. Goose India Pale Ale, Goose IPA. It is a craft beer based out of the uh, Chicago, Il Illinois area, and I love it. Goose IPA. I am going to sip this for the second time, and uh, this happens to be our 2017... All Hallows' Eve, uh, All Souls' Day, and Day of the Dead countdown. Yeah. And it tastes just as great as it did on the circle line. So besides saluting students for a free Tibet, freeing Tibet, I also salute the circle line. I give them kudos. <clears throat> and also uh, the, the, a very unique and very colorful Mexican restaurant on Midland Avenue in Garfield, New Jersey, La Fortaleza. We had a great time. Uh -huh. Especially those soursop frozen margaritas with the uh, with the bats sticking out of them. <laughs> ah. I, I, yeah, I, I, it's on it's on the internet now. Yeah, they were they were Halloween style frozen margaritas served in in old Indian clay vessels. Or, or amphoras, or, or they look like vases made of clay. Mm. In other words, the cups that the indigenous people used. That's what they're using. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
Seven lucky bells for uh, uh -uh. this week's progressive discussion. As you can see, we're very festive here with uh, for the Day of the Dead, 2017. Everything, everything we discuss politically is part of our series, Crapitalism in a Conch Shell. Soak in that conch energy. Yes, King Neptune, I had a very, very busy week. That is true. We are behind. But I, I put together a nice little monologue this morning. Uh -oh. All right? All right. All right. Don't have time to talk to you too much. I don't want to be rude. But sometimes uh, <coughs> you got to suck it up and uh, mm. deal with it. Okay. This has to do, I want to start it off with... Um, uh, the subject of ordinances, local ordinances. Mm -hmm. I want to start off by mentioning the people who were arrested for trying to collect, for attempting to collect rainwater on supposedly their own property. Mm -hmm. There goes the American dream of owning your own home, right? Okay, then in Bergen County, New Jersey. Yes, I am calling out Bergen County, New Jersey. Yes, we, uh, we reside in Bergen County, New Jersey, which is northeastern New Jersey. Bergen County, New Jersey ordinance. Now you cannot put trash or anything by the curb uh, unless it's after 6 p.m. Uh, the day before garbage day. It's bullshit to me. To me, it's just a bunch of politicians, formerly lawyers, trying to find new ways to screw we the people um, out of more revenue, usually revenue for their pockets, right? Uh, capitalism is corporate fascism which allows the people to be scammed by a corporate, by a corrupt system. I'm sorry. Capitalism is Corporate fascism, which allows the people, we the people, to be scammed by a corrupt system. Many ordinances are unfair and ridiculous, and just another form of legalized stealing from the bottom 98%. Okay? Um, it's like, uh, I, I usually, like, if I want to get rid of something that I can't sell, because people on Craigslist.com are cheap motherfuckers. Hey. They want everything for free. So I used to put things out by the curb any any day. And sometimes within an hour or two or three, it's gone. Because we have many scavengers in our area. Pickers. Huh? Pickers. Uh, human scavengers <laughs> known as pickers. I guess. That's like calling a, 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 uh, a janitor a custodian. You know, it's, it's a nicer word. Or, or uh, a retarded person, a mentally challenged, or a, a, an obese person like uh, the man who's leaving Trenton, New Jersey uh, in the near future, Chris Christie. It's like calling him uh, uh, horizontally challenged <laughs> instead of obese or instead of a fat fuck. <laughs> and the reason why I'm being tough on politicians is because of the new ways they come up, the new uh, ideas they come up with, you know, in regards to screwing we the people out of every penny they can. And I just mentioned in the form of local ordinance, ordinances, right? And, uh, hey, traffic. Huh? Traffic. You mean moving violations, parking violations. Parking violations. Uh, There's oh. a, a guy that has an app. Yeah. That can uh, check your ticket for any kind of uh, problems with it so you right. can get off. Or uh, to fight the ticket. You mean based on what the law really says? Yeah. So he's got an app that uh, he would like to. He was on the shark tank. So the other he, night. he is a true consumer advocate that <laughs> had this app created to yeah. help. Yeah. The, the the victims. Yeah. You know what? I don't know his name, but you know what? 
I might as well salute him because I like uh, progressive warriors that are proactive. I always appreciate them. Okay, here we go. I mentioned Chris Christie not being in office too long because we are having an election this November here in the Garden State of New Jersey for a new governor. I have not seen the debates yet between, was it a Phil Murphy? Phil Murphy and, and the Kim Guandano. Yeah, the, 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 the right wing chick that Chris Christie's supporting. Right. I'm sure she... Um, she is not uh, in favor of any social programs for, for low-income people or the poor. No, she's just in, 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 uh, uh, in favor of no more taxes. For, for probably for the rich. Well, no, uh, I don't know. I don't know where these taxes came from. Under, you know, I mean, uh, did Christie sneak them in or what? All I know is... But she's against Phil Murphy. Phil Murphy's going to make taxes, more taxes. Well, that, this is what this last part of the monologue huh. is about. Okay. Well, you know, uh, they... Um, Chris Christie uh, ended many things. He doesn't like teachers being a, a, a well-paid profession with a union and with benefits. He doesn't want anyone... Uh, that receives a salary uh, from the public sector to to have to get what they deserve. Uh. You know, they, he wants to privatize everything, so only only rich kids get a good education, and everyone else gets dumbed down. Chris Christie also eliminated Section Eight rent, rent subsidy for everyone, including senior citizens. Nice guy. He also chopped down like Paul Bunyan, uh, food stamps, making some cockamamie law where if you, if you don't pay utilities, if you, on, if you only pay room and board, you uh, get your food stamps chopped down to almost nothing. Yeah. Meanwhile, Chris Christie obviously has not missed many meals in his life. Believe me. Okay, New Jersey Republican political commercials are still saying that Democrats will raise taxes, including property taxes, on the middle class. Yeah. When, in reality, they just fear that Democrats will make the rich pay their fair share in taxes. Republicans could care less about the middle class, and of course, they hate the poor. Oh. So, you know, when they cry about the tax and spend liberals and the tax and spend Democrats, they just don't want anything public to come out of the taxpayer's dole. They don't want any social programs being funded. But it's okay to, to give free taxpayers' money to the rich and to arrange it so the rich do not pay any taxes at all. Well, like they say all the time. <laughs> We, the United States, pays the highest corporate taxes in the world. The fact of the matter is... It's a lie. The fact of the matter is, no, no corporation actually pays those taxes. No, there are many countries, many, uh, uh, what would you call them, first world... Uh, first world. First world countries, like European countries... Industrialized. That pay, the rich pay much higher taxes because they have what I love. Democratic socialism, where if the rich pay their fair share in taxes, mm -hmm. and then some, guess what? They're still rich. They're still yeah. living high on the hog. Yeah. Like Boss Hog. Boss Hog. They're still living high on the hog. And uh, and social services only make up about 2% of the total budget. And, of course, the wasteful, bloated military budget is oh, like... Geez. 60 some odd percent of the total budget, right? Yeah, about 57, yeah. 57. And uh, it's all lies. The whole thing about tax and spend liberals. Hey, was it, didn't you tell me that Ronald Reagan is the one that emptied out all the mental mental institutions and, and just threw them all on, threw the, street on the street to be yeah. homeless? Yeah. So that's how much, that's how much 
Republicans care about the little guy. Mm. They don't care about Main Street and the middle class and the small businesses, entrepreneurs. And infrastructure. Well, it's still yeah. crumbling. Yeah. Oh, by the way, if you're if you're a veteran, forget about flag waving and patriotism. They want you to they want you to come back in a body bag because they don't want to take care of you. That's why many veterans are being uh, neglected, ignored, and insulted. Actually, as Mr. Trump did the other day in calling the woman uh, the woman whose husband died. <laughs> in Niger, one of the four. And he said to her on the phone, and Congressman uh, heard him, Yeah. he said, well, he knew what he signed up for. So in other words, oh, but what about Trump dra uh, 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 dodging the Vietnam draft? Oh, that's okay. That's all, all right, right? right? Yeah. He knew what he signed up for. In other words, uh, that's the way the crab cake crumbles, yeah. is what he's trying to exactly. say. Tough, tough toenails. Tough toenails, yeah. Exactly. Oh, that, uh, that's a lot of compassion. Isn't that the same compassion that Donald Trump, the uh, the bloated uh, orange buffoon, showed for Puerto Rico with, uh, with yes. the tossing of paper towels? And uh, and what about him, him taking his sweet time with Hurricane Harvey in Houston? And, uh, oh... Oh, oh, he says they've done the best. What about the Red Cross? What about that big white, what is that? Uh, what is Ship? It? Ship Hope? Ship Hope, yeah. The hospital, it's a, it's a floating hospital. where It's white with a big red cross on it. Uh, Did you see that that boat going to Puerto Rico in, in record time? Not well, me. I, you know, I was told that that, that that boat only moves 30 miles an hour. Well, because they need a lot of and hospital was, beds. And it was coming from Norfolk, Virginia. So it did take a while to get there. Well, the statements that Donald Trump makes every week, overall, uh, lacks compassion and empathy. Oh, absolutely. Without a doubt. Absolutely. And I hope that Americans remember everything that they hear and read. And I hope Americans uh, get angry enough that when November Come. 2018 rolls around, and they make it their business to vote, which they should. Otherwise, you have no right to complain, America. That they will vote the scumbags out of office. Because oh, speaking of the scumbags, uh, we keep hoping that Mick Mick Von Raven, my administrator on the Progressive Discussions Facebook page, I salute Mick Von Raven, posted something that uh, uh, a banner that. Be that was very popular with many of our uh, viewers, uh, many of our uh, fans there. Um, and uh, it had to do with, uh, of course, the political horrors in Washington. Honestly, with their salaries and, and the very few hours they work, which, which is way less, way less than any middle class American works, they can afford their own uh, health insurance and uh, retirement plans. They don't need. They don't need to uh, put that on the taxpayers' dole. They can afford the meals they have at, in Washington, and the and the uh, pastries and the donuts and the coffee mm -hmm. and all that. They can afford all that. Set an example. Oh, uh, uh, well, Republicans are the first to say that Americans uh, need to start making sacrifices, but they never do it. No. They never set the example. No. You notice that. Okay, listen. Let us sink our teeth into these readings right now. We are very festive. Uh, it is the uh, 2017 uh, countdown, uh, autumn holiday countdown. Okay? Okay. I think we're looking pretty good here so far. I didn't forget uh, the uh, Day of the Dead couple. They look lovely together, uh, don't they? Lovely. Belgian scientists say they've made a research breakthrough in the relationship between sugar and cancer. Oh, without a doubt. Uh, bacteria, viruses, fungi, uh, and cancer cells love sugar. 
Researchers found yeast with high levels of the sugar known as glucose overstimulated the same proteins often found mutated inside human tumors. And fat cells love sugar too, don't forget. Making cells grow faster. The finding, published in Nature Communications on Friday, aims to shed light on how cancer develops. Johan Tevelin Wim Wim Versies and Vero de Janssen started researching sugars linked to cancer in 2008 to try to better understand what's called the Warburg effect. Well, you're sure not going to find many American scientists and physicians caring about this. <laughs> so therefore, it will, it will be uh, a panel of international scientists and physicians that will care and research. Because Americans are on the take from uh, uh, Big Agra or the, or the toxic American food industry and Big Pharma. And Big Sugar. When tumor cells make energy through a rapid breakdown of glucose, not seen in normal cells, that energy <laughs> fuels tumor growth. The research is able to explain the correlation between the strength of the Warburg effect and tumor aggressiveness. Tevalin from KU Leuven in Belgium mm -hmm. said in a release, this link between sugar and cancer has sweeping consequences. Our research provide a foundation for future research in this domain, which can now be performed with a much more precise and relevant focus. While it's a monumental finding for the research team, it's not a medical breakthrough. It also doesn't prove that eating a low sugar diet could change a cancer diagnosis. Uh, after the fact, uh, oh, oh, you mean, did they really, did they really diagnose the source of cancer in the United States? Or did they just quickly say, chemo? No, what they are quickly going to say is, we need more research! Which we don't have the funding for. That's what they always say. Okay. <laughs> the findings are not sufficient to identify the primary cause of the Warburg effect. Tevelin said in a release, further research is needed to find out whether this primary cause is also conserved in yeast cells. Victoria Stevens, a cancer researcher, with the American Cancer Society, who was not involved in the study, said, This research is great, but it comments only on about one product made during the breakdown of glucose to produce energy. In other words, it's a small step in a long process. Hey, you, wanna, you want me to shorten the long process? Don't eat this stuff! <laughs> and this is not counting uh, uh, what the, the late great Roberts, Dr. Robert C. Atkins used to call Syndrome X, you know, uh, uh, and, and obesity, and di diabetes. Don't eat refined carbohydrates. They are providing a potential way, the Warburg effect, could be a cause of cancer. But, this is not Mark Warburg, who used to be called Marky Mark, by the way. But they are a long way away from any from, from saying this could actually happen, Stephen said. Good goobledy goo. Well, you know she was going to defend her. Uh, uh, oh, we do the research. Lots of research. She's a hooer. Like uh, yeah. on, the, on the, the Sopranos. Uh, <coughs> Tony Soprano, uh, James Gandolfini, God rest his soul. 
uh, the, the woman who played his mother used to say, she's a hooah, she's a hooah. Well, you know what? This woman is a hooah. Yeah, yeah. Because if, uh, Please, you know who yeah. else, you know who else is a hooah, is a corporate hooah? Uh, what, what a lot of us Americans foolishly look up to, Snopes.com. Right. Beware of Snopes. Beware that they're never they're never for natural supplements. Ah. They're always defending drugs. Oh, oh. Same with Consumer Report. Guess what? Guess what I bought yesterday at Chopper. Consumer Reports too. Beware. You know you have to be really in. Uh, as a progressive warrior, you have to really have the common sense. You don't need to be a a genius. The common sense. To know when an article is biased, right? Got to You got to be able to determine that. Yesterday at our local uh, supermarket, Shoprite, I used my Shoprite card to get the big discount, and for four dollars, I bought something, uh, something nice. Uh, uh, the company was called uh, uh, Nature's Trust, which is which is much better than Washington's Lies. Uh -huh. That's funny, that was a joke, right? Levity Bells. I bought uh, oil of wild oregano extract soft gel in an oil in an oil-based form. Oil of wild oregano, one of, if not the number one antibiotic from nature, now given to chickens. I think it's the Purdue Purdue chickens. Was it Jim Purdue is now in charge? Oh, I have no well, whatever. Idea. Commercially raised chickens are receiving uh, oregano as a drug anti antibiotic replacement, and it has been successful. Yeah. All right. It's uh, now. It works, and I got it for a great price. But I keep it in the refrigerator because it's it's a it's an it's a soft gel. It's an earl. I have heard. I have heard. That Blake Shelton, the country singer, and mm -hmm. the gentleman who is on The Voice on TV, it is open already, um, is taking CL. The Voice? You mean The View? The Voice. Oh. It's like uh, America Loves Talent or whatever. Oh, talent. What is he taking? He's taking CL safflower oil. Oh, conjugated linoleic acid from uh, sunflower seed oil safflower. and possibly safflower. Safflower. All right, safflower. To lose weight. That's been around for. And many... he has lost weight. But that that product has been around for many years. Uh, it's nothing new. Well, no, I have it, heard of it's it. It's just not promoted by mainstream. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's on the internet now and it's, uh, you know, it's a big star well, doing it. Listen, listen, they say green tea burns fat, but no matter how you shake it, whether it be thermogenic mm -hmm. herbs like ginger, mm -hmm. cinnamon, clove, turmeric, blah, 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 garlic, no matter how you shake it, you got to change your eating habits and your diet first. Yeah. You have to start with the foundation. True. You got to get off of refined carbohydrates, which includes white sugar and white flour. Well, I can't begin this thing here until our time. Yeah, we, we are going to take a so. very short intermission. Yeah. Like my late grandmother used to say, intermission, uh, a break. Okay. And uh, then we'll be back. Okay. 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 Intermission. Don't ask here. me why. It must be, there must be these intermissions. Ask the Sony Corporation. Uh. Okay. We are back from our short break and we will continue with the following reading of progressive discussions. Uh, 2017 Autumn Holiday Countdown. Autumn Holiday, All Hallows Eve, 
All Souls Day, Ooh. and the Day of the Dead, and which I will salute all Mexican Americans and people in Mexico. <coughs> Happy Day of the Dead, uh, 2017. We're not there yet, but you know what? It's a fun, it's a fun time of year, and we're starting early. Got the gargoyles. Got old man Spock, Leonard Nimoy. We got the the, the official Day of the Dead uh, a couple here. We got the sugar skulls all over the place. We got Svengoolie's coffin or casket. And uh, Jolly Roger is always with us. And Old Glory is back there somewhere on the door. But because the weather is uh, has been pleasant, we're going all natural with the sunlight. Go ahead. Dear Abby. Right. My husband, Ron, and I have been married for 49 years. Holy shit. When we retired, we moved to Florida. Like so many do. Ron? Into, into the hot steam bath, right? Close, close. Ron is 71 and healthy. With rising ocean levels. He rides his bike 30 to 50 miles every day. What? He, he does? rides his bike. At his age? Hey man, I gotta salute this guy. Good for you. He's like he's a, he's like a modern day Jack Lane. He also mows the lawn and takes care of all the gardening. Holy shit! In Florida, with all that heat and humidity, he does all this, You're and he's still alive. You're approaching the problem. The problem is he's gonna drop dead, and she's gonna collect on the life insurance. After all that activity, in the heat and humidity... <laughs> Am I psychic or what? Is James P. Madonna psychic or what? <laughs> he does not bother to shower. Uh-oh. Maybe, maybe he's a cheap bastard. He likes like to buy soap and use, and use the water. He will just change in his clothes oh, God. into whatever he wears B.O. for the night time. Oh no, for the night time he goes to bed stinking to high heavens. I have spoken to him about it, but I can't seem to get through. Why doesn't she just tell him, you know, you stink to high heavens, man. We got we have to sleep in separate rooms because you need to get fumigated. You you're freaking, you know, you stink. <laughs> I'm at my wit's end. I am sensitive to odors. Oh god, I don't blame her. And it has gotten to the point that I want to move out. He is very uh, odiferous and aromatic in a negative way. Can you give me some ideas on what to do? Hit him with a shillelagh upside the head. <laughs> you have say you have been married for 20, 49 years. Yeah, how did they make it that long with this, this smelly bastard? Was he so slovenly about his personal hygiene? Oh, if yeah. it is recent, this may be something that should be brought to the attention of his doctor. As people age, their senses of sight and hearing and smell start to become less acute. Yeah, but, yeah, but when you're in Florida doing all that, perspiring that much, uh, I, I don't blame it on old age. You will stink. If there is nothing wrong with those senses, could be he's developing dementia. You know, Frankly, that was my first thought after reading your letter. Well, he must have dementia if he's, uh... Well, first of all, he's a cheap motherfucker because, um... You know, uh, he doesn't want to hire a landscaper... <laughs> uh, ...to do... take care of the grounds. And, uh, I, I don't blame him for bicycling, which he really, in Florida, should do early in the morning. Or in the late afternoon. Well, oh, by the way, don't bicycle near fresh bodies of fresh water unless you, unless, you know, you want to you want to be a snack for for a, 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 hey. a full-grown uh, adult alligator. Lovely. Yeah, be careful. But yeah, you should never uh, don't of course, don't bicycle when it's the sun is strong. Uh, otherwise you will, you will croak. Uh, as an old bastard, uh, it's very cheap. And, and hire a landscaper. Anyway, go ahead. President Trump 
has officially ended the Obamacare subsidies to the insurance markets. So, there you go. There you go, tw uh, 23, whatever, million people. You just, does that mean they just lost their uh, ability to pay? Affordable Care Act? Yeah, ability to pay. Now, what, what happens if somebody uh, uh, qualifies for state Medicaid? Do, do they still have an Affordable Care Act policy that's going to be offered? No. So they're only they're only going to get Medicaid. That's uh, it. It's possibly they will not get Medicaid, since you know in most of these states the Medicaid is tied up with the Obamacare. That's what they did. They yeah. joined it. Yes. Well, I noticed that people on Social Security, uh, they don't. There's no sup. There's no supplement that goes with Medicare. No. They have to pay. They have to pay premiums if they want to get something extra. That's right. That's right. Oh, by the way, they have to pay Medicare premium, which to me is not fair. It's, it's not fair in in a civilized first world country, you know. His executive order will wreak havoc in the marketplace. Oh, he's going to be hated. Uh, all the Republicans are going to be hated so much. November 2018. Yeah, I hope the people remember that shit. Well, you know, um, like I told uh, Ken Create, you know, he says you have to look at the overall picture, you know, uh, 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 whether or not uh, God's going to accept you or throw, throw you into the lake of fire. I says, you know what, Ken? You got to look at the overall picture. What comes first is priorities. A decent roof over your head, your health, enough food on the table, and clothes on your back. You got to look at, you got to look at the number one priority. And Republicans are not going to give the bottom 98% the basic priorities of survival. Hell no. No, they're not going to give you anything. Causing premiums to rise as younger and healthier members drop out of the insurance pools. Drop out? Thrown out. Seeking cheaper plans with inferior coverage. Oh, I know that all too well. Many years ago when I used to work temp jobs back in the day, oh my God, I had a horrible health insurance plan <laughs> with the ADECO, you scumbags, the ADECO uh, employment agency, ADECO staffing. You know, they used to get, if I got, let's say, eh, let's say I got $12 an hour. You, you, did you know they used to get $12 an hour commission on every, every hour I, I worked? Like for every, like, like they would match, their commission would match, match my, my hourly pay. There you go. And, and the insurance only went as high as like 1900 some odd dollars a year. That's all I had. That's the only health insurance I had. Capitalism sucks. It really does. It really does, people. All you flag-waving evangelical teabaggers. It really does suck. Trump's promise to provide quality health insurance to every American has been broken. Promise. All of his promises have been broken. Rather than support efforts to fix the plan, he has acted with spite in his need to salvage a win by repealing a health plan signed by his predecessor. So he whom, had yeah. whom he despises. So so let me guess. Uh, Trump's campaign promise of a a better health care reform re replacement for Obamacare has not yet materialized. Never. Never because there is none. So we were right this whole time. There is not going to be a replacement. That's right. That's correct. With a stroke of the pen, and without any forethought or regard to the human cost of his action, he has made health insurance for millions of Americans unaffordable. Well, he doesn't. He didn't give a shit about the people of Puerto Rico. What makes you think he's going to give a shit about 
any low-income individual in the United States. Trump's pride has trumped the needs of the populace. Congratulations, Mr. Trump. You have shown your true colors in this desperate act to save face. The President, my pen falters as I write this. Yes, sure. For I refer to a man who is morally and psychologically unfit to hold this office. Yeah, I think he has less um, compassion and empathy than uh, your typical uh, uh, a sane Republican with all, with all of his, uh, you know, a, ment a mentally stable Republican. Like, like, let's say, uh, like a John McCain, you know, someone who's men mentally stable, but Republican, you know, or the guy that they, uh, they, 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 they kicked out, uh, uh, John, uh, John Boehner. Or, Boehner. Hey, he hasn't done any interviews, has he? No. He, he has dummied up like Archie Bunker yes. used to say. Yes, he has. Very strange. Now... As the blood of millions of Americans he has on his hands. Oh, yeah. And Puerto Rico. We now have Trump care shameful. Trump care equals death care. There you go. Basically. That's, that's the translation of Trump care. Yeah. <coughs> Keep your eyes to the sky this weekend. It's not the second coming of Christ, even though we need it. You'll be able to see one of the year's best space shows with the peak of the Oranid meteor shower. Oh, yeah. Why can't this meteor shower just fall on, on all Republican senators and congressmen? Wouldn't that be great? The Oranids are popular among stargazers. Because all its individual shooting stars are fragments of the most famous comet of all time. Haley's, Haley's Comet. Hail Bop. Let's go to the Bop. No, that, that was a yeah. pop, right? Let's go to the Hop, oh, baby. Yeah. The shower should be visible on Friday and Saturday nights. Well, depending on how much uh, pollution we have an, an haze in the sky. With the best view and viewing between midnight and dawn. Though the meteors will come from the eastern horizon, they will streak across the entire sky and will be visible from anywhere on the earth. According to NASA. By dawn, they should be high in the southern sky. Southern and, sky? and sky and telescope said, From a dark sight, you might see a mat maximum of about 10 to 15 meteors per hour. The meteors that streak across the sky are some of the fastest and brightest among meteor showers because the earth is hitting the stream of particles almost head on as the comet moves through space it leaves debris in its wake that strikes earth's atmosphere most fully around October 20th and October 22 each year Although the comet itself is nowhere near the Earth, we are now intersecting the comet's orbit. If the meteors originate from Halley's, why are they called the Oranids? Meteors in annual showers are named for the point in our sky from which they appear to radiate. Uh -huh. The radiant point for the Oranids is in the direction of the famous constellation Orion the Hunter. The, uh, the Orion constellation is 
the most famous and possibly the most significant uh, is, is the Pleiades uh, star formation part of Orion's belt, Orion's constellation. Because I, 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 they, I they mention Orion and Pleiades quite often in regards to, you know, I on the show Ancient Aliens on the History Channel. Yeah. In, in regards to the, the Mayans and all ancient cultures. They, uh, the pyramids of Giza, yeah, the pyramid of Giza, the pyramids in Egypt, you know, they all seem to be in line with the constellation Orion for some reason. And they say that the star people, you know, like the Sumerians called them the Anunnaki, came yeah. from the Orion, <clears throat> Orion uh, constellation region. And where are they today? They're around, they're there, the in interdimensional travel. The reptilians and all that, hey, uh, all that stuff, conspiracy, <laughs> uh, NWO, UFOs, interdimensional travel. That's probably how, how demons uh, get around. Uh, but demons do not need mechanic stuff. No. Okay. No. If you, if you are religious, then you will believe. That, they evil, are that evil spirits are, are spirits. That's correct. I mean, and very, if very you, powerful. Uh, and if you read your Bible, you ah. would know that the uh, spirits and bad demons have no sex, so they would not be having sex with human beings. So, so Enoch. Uh, so, Mr. Enoch. The Book of Enoch, which claims that the fallen angels had sex with mortal. Um, uh, human women, human females, and gave birth to evil giants is uh, quite confusing because uh, they're, they, are, they are supposed to be, what's the term uh, when you don't have genitalia? No, uh, you have no genitalia. Asexual? Asexual. Uh, in other words, you're pretty much dead in the water. Captain Dunzel, when it comes to sexuality and, and reproduction. But in other words, those things have no meaning. Well, your for spirit. Them. They have no meaning for them. I mean, it's like. And then uh, you must ask yourself the question: Just supposing, just supposing you were a spiritual being, why would you want to fuck around with a human being? Well, to try something new and different. I don't know. No, you don't have no sex. Like if you, it's like putting, it's like putting, it's like Martha Stewart presenting the most delectable Thanksgiving dinner yeah. in front of an a, a group of angels or demons. So like, hey, dig in, guys, enjoy. But they don't eat either. But they don't eat. <laughs> you see, that's because. So what you don't, what you don't feel, <laughs> but what you do not desire, you don't miss. In other words. That's right. Or you need. You like don't in other need. words, if you're pure. You need. A spirit is most likely pure intellectual energy, like those on Star Trek. They like, can take different shapes and forms. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, shape shifting, they call uh, it. Shape shifting. That's they, the one from uh, Space Nine. No, the, Star no, Trek. No, Space that's Nine. a bona fide term. In in para para. No, but he's a shape shifter. In paranormal, uh, in the paranormal field, that's a that is that is a a a word that they use. The shape shifter. Uh, uh, can be um, a demon. It can be a shadow person from another dimension, which can't, which it, it's in theory might be an alien. But the the ability to shape shift can take any form. Like if you're if you're a medium and you're having a you're attempting to have a séance because you think that the spirit of a little girl is yeah. giggle is really a little girl giggling is really a little girl. Well, how do you know that is that it's really a little girl? I don't know. You don't know. Most of those things are fakes and phonies and frauds. Because a demon can take any form. Yeah. But on Star Trek Space Nine, the sheriff of the space platform. Sheriff. Well, he's the sheriff. He's a, he is a shapeshifter. Does he have a, a, a old-fashioned uh, U.S. Marshal like the badge I gave you? No, he's quite plain. Yeah, he's I like the, I like those badges. 
I gave you one. It was a it was a night. It was a real heavy duty. One. No, I'm a sheriff. No, I am not. The, the US well, I don't have no sheriff's that bad. Yeah, but you 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 like Western things. That's why I got. Well, it. I don't have one. I gave you one. No, I don't have it. What did you do with it? I never got it. I gave it to you. It's silver. It's made of steel, rather. You lost it. No, I would have put it on. I would have put the hat on, and I would have taken a picture. No, I gave up it to you for real. I didn't do it. For real, you forgot? I didn't forget, I never no, got I it. No, I really gave it to you. You know what I have to do now? I you have better to take, look. Every time I give somebody something, I have to take a video and, and, and archive it. There you go. This guy forgot completely that I gave him a replica, steel, heavy-duty, U.S. Marshal, Wild Wild West, U.S. Marshal badge. It was a star. I don't, all right, I continue. I don't want to. I really did give it to him. It would have looked great on your black... Uh... I would have had a picture taken at Facebook. Well, you did put it on your black hat. Oh, wait a minute. That That's where it is. That's the... Maybe. Possibly. You Where's pinned my it. black hat? Well, I don't want to... I don't want to screw up the show. You know what? Let's so wait. my black hat. Let's wait for lunch. That's where it is. Continue. Chop, chop, uh, man. Republican. Oh, God. Speaking of demons. <laughs> On Thursday, muscled a four trillion budget through the Senate in a major step forward for President Donald Trump's ambitious promise ambitious. of massive tax cuts and reform. Yeah, well, the disclaimer is really tax cuts for the rich. That's the disclaimer. The 51 to 49 votes sets the stage for debate later this year to dramatically overhaul the United States tax code. Overhaul it. Yeah, so the rich pay nothing. <laughs> for the first time in three decades. Cutting rates for individuals and corporations while eliminating trillions of dollars of deductions and special interest tax break. I thought Ronald Reagan did enough cutting of, of uh, taxes from the rich. I thought he did enough. This guy, they apparently want no taxes for the rich. Well, because, well, yeah, because, yeah, you know, uh, during the 30 years or more, since those deductions and etc., mm -hmm. the rich have gotten richer. Well, that's always, so they want to save more money. That's always been the case. My grandmother used to tell me that when I was a little kid. The rich will always get richer and the yeah. poor will, will always get poorer. There you go. Gee, uh, capitalism sure sounds grand, doesn't that's it? That's right. She also used to say you can't fight City Hall, which is actually not true. Because um, if the asses of the masses... Like, God rest his soul, uh, Grandpa Al Lewis used to say, if the asses of the masses worked in unison, yeah. like the soldier ants in the, in the jungle, <clears throat> a lot can get done. Well, yeah, you wouldn't, uh, and, and, and if you, if they treated you like uh, citizens and human beings, they would take your call. Human beings? Well, we're, we're subhuman. We're, we're only suckers for yeah. the... For the top two percent. That's it. They're the ones that have the lobbyists, and yeah. they're the ones that the Senate and the Congress take the calls. Yeah. And of course, they hate unions because unions stick up, uh, uh, support civil rights and human rights, and uh, employ employees, you know, workers' rights, yeah. benefits, OSHA, you know, safety on the job, uh, not working till you drop dead, <laughs> you know, long hours. Yeah. The tax cuts would end up adding up to 1.5 trillion dollars. Yeah. And that would add to the deficit over the coming decade. Sure. However, as Republicans have shelved fears about the growing budget deficit in favor of a once in a generation opportunity to rewrite the tax laws, these reforms that change incentives and drive growth, and we've never done that before, said Senator Pat Toomey, Republican of Pennsylvania. Okay. 
the White House hailed the bill's passage, saying it creates a pathway to unleash the potential of the American economy through tax reform and tax cuts. The upcoming tax measure, always a top item on the GOP agenda, has taken on greater urgency with the failure of the party to carry out its long-standing promise to dismantle former President Barack Obama's signature health care law. So even though Barack Obama is um, a, a free man now, a civilian, yeah. uh, they, they want to totally undo everything Barack Obama did for the little guy. That is exactly what Trumpy wants a to further do. Further obstructionism, even though the poor guy is not president anymore. He wants him to, well, remember what Mitch McConnell said, we want to make him a one-term president, and what they really want to do is they want to, they want to put an asterisk next to his name in the history book as if he never was a president. Oh, and Donald Trump deserves to uh, go in the history book as, a as the best. As a, as not only, yeah, as the best bona fide president the United States ever had. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Hold on. I, I need to ring the levity bells. Oh. That is exactly what he says. Well, uh, 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 asterisk, the world's largest insane asylum <laughs> that ever existed, the United, the, the uh, corporate fascist oligarch states of America. The Republicans have said failure on taxes would be politically devastating in next year's midterm elections when control of the House and the Senate are at stake. Ah, remember Americans would get go to the polls. It's your, it's your right as a, an American citizen to always vote. It, it, it's a right that people fought and died for, which, people, which Americans don't seem to understand or care. Yeah. And take back the Senate and the House. Yes. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, pull the fangs out of the top 2% of the income population. Mm -hmm. of, the, of, of the population. Period. Top 2%. Defang. When reconciled, with the House budget plan, the non-binding measure would set up special procedures to pass follow-up tax legislation without the threat of a filibuster by Senate and Democrats. Mm. Well, there's a great banner out there that says, if, if, hey, if democratic socialism was so bad, how come the most famous Democratic Socialist, FDR, was re-elected so many times. Four times, yeah. Yeah, right. Pressure is mounting on the House to simply adopt the Senate budget plan rather than risk lengthy negotiations that could delay the tax measure. Countdown. Soon. The House measure calls for a tax plan that would not add to the deficit, as well as $200 billion worth of cuts to benefit programs <laughs> that the hearts. Senate has rejected. Bless their hearts. Fortunately. Countdown. Democrats blasted the GOP budget warning voters that the upcoming tax measure will shower benefits on top bracket earners. There you go. Corporations, business partnerships, and people inheriting multi-million dollar estate. The fat cats. Trump promises that the tax plan is aimed at the middle class. Of course. Of course it is. But previous versions...
Greetings. This is James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21 Hard Hitting Podcasts, Holistic Health Talk, and Progressive Discussions. I want to talk about the very foundation of our entire organization, the newsletter that was founded by my co-host and mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisman, in 1977. And that newsletter is called Censored. Newsletter Censored is truth and news fighting censorship and conservative propaganda. We believe we are living in the end times and you need Newsletter Censored. Newsletter Censored pr provides the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? Newsletter Censored is for the independent, critical, free thinker with an open mind. Besides the reading of Censored, Newsletter Censored also has The God Project and How to Defeat a Conservative. There is nothing in the mainstream media or the press like Newsletter Censored. So simply go to www.newslettercensored.com and with your gift to support this work, get your free annual subscription to the newsletter that started it all in 1977, Newsletter Censored. You need Newsletter Censored. That's www.newslettercensored.com. Okay, we are back from lunch. Yeah. We are back from lunch. And I hope our viewers, uh, during our inter our gastronomic uh, delight, known as lunch, I hope you uh, took advantage of how to defeat a conservative Bible verses and clicked on the pause button, did some reading and learned which is a very rare thing in, in, in America, in America today. It's people using, being critical, being independent, critical free thinkers, and actually researching, studying, learning, making their own decisions. We're on the second bottle of Goose IPA. For those of you that don't know a damn thing about beer or craft beer or microbreweries, it is India Pale Ale. It is delicious. I believe the company is based out of Chicago. I could be wrong, but I think that's it, that it is. But nevertheless, whether they're based out of Chicago or Timbuktu or uh, Antarctica, made by penguins, it's a good. Yeah. It's a good beer. <clears throat> Continue with the show. I. I am an independent conservative Christian, <laughs> favoring no party. The writer defended his progressive position by citing the lack of funding by the Republican majority in the House for the CHIP program. Chip, not the chips, not the not uh, Eric Estrada, the old uh, no, series. Not the from, California Highway Patrol. No, California Highway Patrol. Eric Estrada with the beautiful white teeth, back in the 1980s. You know what a conservative Christian is? That's a cherry picker, man. That's somebody who cherry picks from the Bible uh -huh. uh, what they like, like like stoning women and gay people. <coughs> that supports children's health initiatives. Both sides differ on this and many other issues. Well, yeah, well, a conservative Christian doesn't want to provide any health care for any human that needs assistance. <coughs> the struggle of the poor and hungry is a tragedy. Well, that's all you're going to get. You're going to get some prayers. You're going to get some, oh, ah, oh, well, poor thing. 
You're not going to get any money. I agree it's an unfortunate struggle for many Americans and others not able to sustain themselves because of the narcissism, <coughs> incompetence, slaw, and the constant battle for power within our government. Even if you kept the jobs in the United States, Mr. Conservative Christian, not there are many Americans still will not be able to sustain themselves. Democrats and Republicans included. But the writer overstepped the line blaming Christian conservatives who wrapped themselves in a coat of religion and seemed to forget the basic tenets of the faith, such as feeding the hungry, comforting the poor, <coughs> for the failure on the CHIP reauthorization. The writer and his news organization may show a concern for the poor and hungry, but what makes me angry is his preaching about the tenets of the faith of others when there's a gross hypocrisy consistent with the Democratic Party faithless ideology within the record's previous articles defending a woman's right to choose, supporting Planned Parenthood, and its sinister medical practices desecrating human life in the womb. Those humans never have a chance to be rich or poor or anything else. Perhaps the writer should look hard and his own beliefs before attacking someone else. Okay, I like that. I like to make a comment um, based on this article. Uh, when I uh, the other day when I went to the local supermarket shop, right, and I found the oil of wild oregano extract, I uh, as I was entering the building, uh, there was a, uh, a large folding table laid out with individuals that were handing out brochures and it had to do with, uh, it was a fundraiser for uh, local food pantries. Well, let me tell you something. If, you, if we didn't have Republican Chris, Christie uh, that took an axe and chopped away at food stamps, you wouldn't, people wouldn't have to rely on fundraisers for food pantries. And, you know, which is really not adequate food, nutritional, nutritional, based on nutritional content, nutritional density. It is only uh, a design to fill people's bellies up, to give them a feeling of fullness, satiety in the stomach. They, it, it, it's crap food, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. But if you, if you didn't have a Republican chopping uh, snap, food stamps, you wouldn't need fundraisers for food pantries. Um, also, um, I know for a fact that, um, not to change the subject, but uh, um, um, health care organizations in connection with hospice, which, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm a lay person in this field. I'm assuming they are terminally ill people. Hospice, is that correct? My yes. assumption? They are told, the hospice nurse, nurses are told by the uh, people either running the clinics or the doctors to cease uh, uh, giving the uh, hospice patient their medication, their uh, any food or water. In other words, uh, it sounds like assisted suicide. Uh, you know, like Doctor, the late Doctor Kavorkian used to do. Euthanizing. You know, they're they're told. In other words, in my opinion, it's not it's not over until the fat lady sings. They want to throw the fat lady to the side and they want to, they're told to cease giving the hospice patient anything that would keep that person alive. But if that person is able to hold a conversation, <clears throat> eat, eat, watch television, go to the bathroom, hey, 
You know what I mean? I mean, what do you think? Does that sound like assisted suicide when... Well, when they go to a hospice, <laughs> there is no... There's usually, under our, you know, form of medicine, et cetera, and that is what we know as of today, there's no hope. Well, they're being kept... But they're, be, they're being kept... They're being kept alive, and as long as you're... You're not brain dead. There's always the hope of a miracle, or or, or a breakthrough in medical science. Well, you know what I mean. It's like uh, in the reality of that situation, in those situations, ninety-nine percent of the time there is no hope. So it's like a fucking animal shelter. They keep the dog or the cat for a certain period of time, and then they have to euthanize. And then they euthanize the possibly loving, innocent animal, unless it's a no-kill shelter, you know, that cares. Well, no-kill no shelters are uh, shelters, uh, I believe, will one day be in trouble because what are you going to do with the overload? So they rely on donations? Yeah, but what are you going to do with the overload? You mean as the... the, the we're, I'm not trying to, to digress, but... There's, there's a correlation between a hospice a clinic letting someone die, <laughs> accelerating, I'm sorry, accelerating the demise of a patient and a, an animal shelter accelerating the demise of, of, of a dog, cat, or whatever. Yeah, like you said, you know, you have, you have funds <clears throat> that are coming in to to care for the animals and feed them. And they're probably limited. And as re in relation to how many animals are in the shelter. Or in the world. Or Just yeah. suppose when we had um, no-kill situations <laughs> throughout uh, Africa, and et cetera. Well, well, how much the time would it take before the animals overran us? <laughs> well... In the third world, human life, human rights are not recognized. Well, yeah. Because I had the misfortune of watching about one third of the movie called Blood Diamond, and it was disturbing the way they treat people, like like they were, you know, like they were livestock. The corruption is is unbelievable. Uh -huh. They're military dictatorships. They murder <clears throat> uh, women, children, the elderly. They don't. They don't care. They don't care. They, 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 they really should be. Really, if Donald Trump wants to send attack drones, he should send them to these African countries. Because this, oh, by the way, this is where many uh, uh, internet scammers are from. <laughs> also, Ghana, Nigeria, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. yeah. You know, you're going to send an attack drone, send it where it's needed. <laughs> you know? That's all I have to say about that. Anyway, continue. Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin recently proposed the elimination of the deduction for state and local taxes in President Trump's tax package as an unnecessary subsidy to the states. In the case of New Jersey, he got his facts twisted. New Jersey gets it back 74 cents for every dollar it sends to Washington. It is New Jersey and other urbanized states that are subsidizing the states that reportedly get back well over 100 percent of what they pay to Washington. That's the red states. Oh yeah, the red states with all with all those uh, brain cell deficient people that keep on re-electing conservatives. Yeah, okay. Interestingly, most of these are red states. Too bad my favorite color is associated with with Republicans and fascists and right wing fascists and all that stuff. Too bad. You know? Well, blue's not a bad color either. I must side with Representative Bill Pascrell, Democrat of Patterson, and agree 
with his comments referring to Mnuchin's arrogance. Yeah, Bill Pasquale is our personal congressman, is that correct? In our district. That funny noise you're hearing is a probably a cat sneezing. Under the table. Huh? Under the table. Okay. Arrogance is always a sign of bigness. Uh, or maybe the person is just, just a naturally born selfish bastard. Maybe they're sociopathic. <sighs> they, maybe they just, they don't feel any empathy or compassion. You know? I, I wouldn't feel sorry for people like this. These are adults. They're supposed to know better, Reverend Bill. Mm, true. You know what I mean? True. True. Of course true. See the shillelagh? True. You know what? Old-fashioned disciplinary action. Watch Go ahead. It. I have a Marshall cap. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you outrank me. I am a 28-year-old woman uh -oh. who has been trying to find love for her entire life, but no luck. You know what? She's not alone because there are many people trying to find love and... And often uh, all, in all the wrong places, like the, uh, was that a country western song? Looking for love in all the wrong places. I have been trying online pretty dating song, yeah. for the last few years, but I always get dumped. You know what the problem is? People lie in their profiles with online dating. They, it, online dating is only as effective. It is only as effective as how genuine the profiles are, the information in the profiles. Or the guy tells me that he doesn't want a relationship. You know, don't listen to those, that puffy face old geezer on eHarmony, where, you know, he's trying to make it scientific and he's trying to guarantee that you're going to meet the love of your life. Oh. No, it's, it, the chemistry and science are often two separate things. And my, people can lie on eHarmony e and Match.com also. My last heartbreak was a guy four years younger telling me he didn't want anything serious or long term. Did he state that in his profile? I wonder. I am up against a wall. Yeah, because you don't know who's telling you the truth and who isn't. The guys I feel sorry for a lot of people. I really do. On online sites seem weird. Uh, guy, hey, guys in, in bars seem weird. Uh, people are weird, period. Look, look, look at who's in Washington. I feel like no one decent talks to me on these sites. Is she, you know, there's also a possibility that the woman is, is extremely nitpicky and has her, her expectations are too high. I have no one asking me out offline, either. Is she a gold digger? Is she materialistic? Or is she a nice, a nice girl? A nice old-fashioned decent girl? I'm concerned. Because I just hate being single. Well, because she, she's probably lonely and she wants to find a significant other, but uh, people have to be honest with their profiles. I'm sorry. I hate to break the news to you. And you can't be nitpicky. You know, like, uh, the guy's got to be successful, career, money, be bo bo be a, a, a sweetheart of a guy, too. Good looking, tall, uh, uh, well built. You know, I mean, it's like, it's like longer than the Gettysburg Address. Alright, go ahead. <laughs> Why can everyone else find someone but not me? Everyone else? It's like when Ralph Cramden said to Alice, Everyone does it? Everyone does it? Everyone else? She's the only one? The only one. That's unattached and lonely and looking? In the whole wide world. In the world. whole world? It's like a person who brags so much about their kid, like no one else gave birth in the whole entire planet Earth. There's no one else is having babies but them. Oh, help me. Help me, Spock. Yeah, dear Lonely, I'd like to point you toward a few course corrections. I just did? 
first of all, you are not the only person in the world without a partner. Schmott, this person thinks like me. That's, that, that's a good observation. Some of the personal factors that make you feel lonely now, your insecurity, desperation, and habit of blaming others, will still be present after you have met someone. Listen, yeah, the, yeah, that's true. Gary No talks about that sometime. Dr. Gary No says that uh, happiness uh, has to be created from within. Like, hey, hey, like Bill, William H. Morrow, William H. Morrow III, the guy who's retired that used to do our, our commercial voiceovers, he enjoys a living alone and not and being unattached but that's only him but you know he enjoys calling his own shots and not having to compromise All right, go ahead. and <clears throat> potential matches can detect your desperation and negativity a mile away you mean like if you if you seem too desperate yeah, what do they call that neediness needy needy Ooh. Ooh, I need, Ooh. I want, I need, I want. You don't I... like that on uh, online, believe me. Yeah, but then again, if you're too standoffish, they'll complain about that too. You know what? People will, listen, people will always find something to bellyache. Well, about. yes. Flailing around on various matching sites will not yield anything different until you make some real and solid personal change. Know what that is? Well, the trick here is to stop looking for a period of time and make a commitment to work on yourself. Like, uh, I bet, I bet uh, some of the suggestions are going to be uh, cultivate some hobbies and interests, things you enjoy doing in your spare time. I'm sorry, I made you lose your place. Well, no, but I'm wondering here. <coughs> um, you should examine your childhood, your mm. parents. Yikes! That could be that could be harsh. Your relationship. Yeah. Your typical dynamic in friendships, and look for pa patterns mm. that you can consciously disrupt and improve. Meeting with a counselor might help. You should also work on forming and keeping female friendships. Friends will help you to navigate these challenging passages. They will introduce you to people, prop you up, tell you honestly when you are being a jerk. Honesty always helps. Honesty, but also a man and a woman should equally be honest with their online dating profiles. Again, I, I know I'm being redundant. You need to learn to live your life as if you will not find a forever partner. This is what I just told somebody the other day. In other words, get a life. Get a life and uh, because you see all these women all the time, I need a man. I need a man. I need a man. You know? Right now, I lost my plot. plot. I, I, no, so I enjoyed you m mocking, uh, mimicking them. Okay. You I need, need. I need a man. I need a man. A man. <laughs> you, you need to learn to live your life as if you will not find a forever partner. Develop your professional skills. Commit to finding good work. Dive into the real world. Join organizations. There you go. And find opportunities to give generously of yourself. But it's not always about career. I, I'm going to have to disagree with this person. It's not a, it shouldn't always be career oriented. It, it should be things that make, that make you enthusiastic about life. Like oh, things yeah. that you enjoy. Like for instance, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman happens to love the game of chess. Whoa! He loves chess. What if yeah. He played chess yeah. with a woman who also loved to play chess. What if that woman was cute, hey. or uh, rather good-looking, or maybe maybe even more? Ooh. There you go. Then Dr. Bill would luck out. 
Whoa. Because he would have something in common, plus the girl would be attracted. Yeah. Chemistry, boing. Well, <laughs> boy. Boy, <you're> boing. Boing. <laughs> boing. Boing. Chemistry, yeah, it does equal boing, by the way. My grandfather used to say that in different words. But I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, seriously. Um, um, but that, that, that reading is, is gone, right? But we have time maybe for a short one. I don't know. Trump argued Tuesday for changes in tax law, oh, health care, immigration policy by lobbying Twitter insults. Lo uh, it's lobbying, but it, it should be lobbying. He sure has a lot of time to, to be on Twitter, doesn't he? Yeah. Twitter insults at the NFL, Congress, Democrats, fellow Republican, Bob Corker, among others. <laughs> Trump began his tweet-filled morning by suggesting that the NFL lose tax breaks if players, if players continue to kneel during hey, the national anthem. Here we go again with this fucking kneeling. Why is the NFL <coughs> getting massive tax breaks while at the same time disrespecting our anthem, flag, and country? Hey, why are the owners of professional sports teams uh, 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 getting stadiums built on the taxpayer's dole. Yeah! Uh, you know, the owners. That's what happened with the, the San Diego Chargers, I heard. They moved to Los Angeles, I hear, because they were freaking belly aching that the city of San Diego did not want to build a bigger new stadium for them. Same thing, th same thing happened with the Baltimore Colts moving to Indianapolis. Why the hell should the taxpayers pay for your new stadium, you yeah. rich son of a bitches? Yeah. You know? What well, son of a bitch? He bit. followed up by attacking Democrats over immigration. Capitalism. Unbelievable. During the promote a hardline immigration <coughs> proposal, Trump just weeks ago said he and the Democrats were close to a deal to keep special protection in place for young immigrants who were brought into the country illegally by their parents. And it's not the child's fault, and it's cruel, and I repeat, cruel, to deport them. Yet the Trump administration this weekend released a list of hardline immigration priorities that includes funding for a wall along the U.S.-Mexican border. Here we go again with that wall. Democrats have balked, drawing Trump's ire. The problem with agreeing to a policy on immigration is that the Democrats don't want secure borders. They don't care about the safety for USA, Trump tweeted. Trump then turned to health care. Yeah, but American companies sure love to hire I I I illegal immigrants to work cheap, don't they? Yes, they do. But they don't go, the Republicans won't go after the American companies. Angry with a Republican majority that has been unable to agree on a plan to repeal and replace Obamacare, Trump plans this week to sign an executive order. Yeah, replace it, sure. That would make one change, allowing associations to buy insurance across state lines. Oh, Since Congress can't get its act together, what's money to pay premiums? I will be using the power of the pen to give great health care to many people fast, Trump said. Give great health care to many people fast, Trump said. Uh, 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 let me guess. He wants them to pay for it out of pocket? He wants I'm them to sure pay for it? I'm sure because they don't, they're not going to get any subsidies. What? You know what? Unless you're, you're rich. <laughs> Pay, paying for everything out of pocket sucks. That kind of a system and country sucks the big one. I hate to hate to break the news to you, Donald Trump. On Monday, ESPN announced it had suspended Hill, that Jamal Hill, sports show host, who recently accused the president of being a white supremacist. Well, white supremacists sure love them. Yeah, they do. They sure love Donald Trump, don't they? Yeah, they do. Jerry Jones' decision to bench players who do not stand for 
the national anthem. In response... I got an itch in the middle of my forehead. Why should a person of color stand and put their hand over their heart in a racist country? Trump hit both Hill and the network. With Jamal Hill at, it, at the mic, it is no wonder ESPN ratings have tanked. In fact, it tanked so badly, it is the talk of the industry. Trump then went on after two favorite targets, the news media and Corker, citing a New York Times interview in which the Tennessee senator said the president's threats against North Korea and other nations could set the United States on the path to World War III. That is quite possible. Hey, did Jimmy Carter ever go to North Korea to, to, con uh, to quell things? Mm -hmm. or, you know. Just the basketball player, LeBron. That's, I'd say that's it for this week. What do you think? Yeah, okay, thank you right. for joining us for Progressive Discussions. 2017 Autumn Holiday Countdown, All Hallows' Eve, All Souls' Day, and Day of the Dead. Salute again to Mexican Americans and people of Mexico. Day of the Dead. I love this time of year. We'll see you next time on our official All Hallows' Eve, All Souls' Day, and Day of the Dead celebration show. God willing. Well, that will be on, uh, let me see. That will 25, be... 26, 27, 28. Hold on, let me give you some room there. Yeah. Take it for that. Exactly. Excuse me. Exactly.